Once again, the evolutionists are all warm and fuzzy. The news is filled with dramatic announcements that the Venter Lab has created an organism with the first synthetic genome. Several publications announced it like this. Scientists create artificial life. How should this achievement, dramatic and groundbreaking though it sounds, how should it be understood? Live Science headlined the story, First Live Organism with Synthetic Genome Created. The word created was emphatic in the article. The J. Craig Venter Institute says that they have succeeded in creating the first living organism with a completely synthetic genome. It almost sounds like the lab created something entirely new from scratch, artificial life. New scientists even used religious overtones, calling it an immaculate creation. A closer look, though, shows that the synthetic genome still used the four-letter code of a living bacterium and used its own transcription and translation machinery. It would be a little like a programmer inserting a USB drive with a program already on it into an existing computer. The computer has to have the operating system and software to even recognize the code in the first place. This is a big difference from making a computer with its own code and operating system from scratch, like the term artificial life and completely synthetic genome imply. Science Daily's headline was a little more accurate, saying, Scientists boot up a bacterial cell with a synthetic genome. But even then, Venter's team relied on an operating system and coding system that was already defined and in place. The Venter Institute found out some things about genomes from their work. Most importantly, they found out that they are not very forgiving. Even a tiny inaccuracy could prevent the inert DNA from activating into a live bacterium, making accuracy paramount, the Live Science article mentioned. At one point, a single base pair mistake set the entire program back three months, they said. And, of all things, the Venter Institute proudly planted watermarks in their genome. The researchers deliberately inserted four sequences of DNA that serve as watermarks so they could distinguish between the naturally occurring and synthetic bacteria, Live Science reported. The watermarks contain a code that translates DNA into English letters with punctuation, allowing the scientists to literally write messages with the genes. So, what did they write? The 46 researchers included their own names and a URL that anyone who deciphers the code can then email. It seems that evolution-minded geneticists keep walking right into the gaping trap of intelligent design. If an alien civilization discovered the Venter Group's genome and read the names, would they be justified in assuming a design and a designer? What if they inferred that this genome was simply the result of random chance? Wouldn't they be wrong? Very wrong? Of course they would be. Then why would that alien civilization be forced, according to the scientific consensus of the Darwin Party, that the only scientific rationale for the operating system and the code itself is blind chance and necessity? A message is a message. A function resulting from that message is a purposed function. If the function of a URL is to allow a human to send an email, and the function of a signal transduction system is to send a hormone to a chromosome to stop or start transcription of a gene, what's the difference? These are both examples of messages that carry out purposed functions. They both scream intelligent design and therefore the existence of an intelligent designer. The evolution-leaning news media certainly knows how to hype its Darwinian faith. This accomplishment by the Venter Group is an incremental step in genetics, to be sure, but it is not a breakthrough. Geneticists have been doing genetic engineering for years, including genetic watermarking. Venter's lab has simply taken existing genes from living bacteria and performed some reverse engineering on it 
then inserted it back into the hardware of a living cell. Any way you look at it, it's further proof of the necessity of intervention by a designer, thus pointing to an intelligent design. So, did scientists create life? No, they did not. They did not even come close. And even if they did create life, they would have proved that intelligent intervention is necessary for life to exist. Unless, of course, the scientist himself, who would be the designer, is simply a random, non-purposed blob of goo with no intelligence, thought, or purpose of his own. I guess the conundrum is this. I actually know some evolutionists who meet that very description.